What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. Now last week I did a video giving you 11 fantastic reasons to get a saltwater aquarium. But of course it is not all red wine and roses. So today I'm going to show you the other side of that coin and tell you 11 reasons why you might not want to get a saltwater aquarium. Let's check it out. First up then is the skimmer cup. Skimmers are the beating heart of most marine aquariums. They pull out waste to stop it harming your livestock. But when I say pull out waste, what I actually mean is they gather fish poop into a cup and you have to clean that poop cup. And you probably have to do it in the kitchen sink, which means you'll have to wait till your missus is out unless you want to get in trouble. Oh, and when you're cleaning that skimmer cup, sniff the skimmate, I dare you. <laughs> Number 10 on my list is clutter. Now at best, tanks come with a small cupboard next to the sump but all you can fit in there are a few essentials like plug sockets and dosing equipment. So you will need every other space around your house for your RO filter, water butts, salt buckets, food, spare parts, and all other bits you accumulate over the years. Think this is a side table? Wrong, it's a freshwater reservoir. How about this? Looks like a coffee table? Wrong, it's a miscellaneous crap drawer. Literally every storage space in my house is full of fish tank stuff. The bigger the tank, the worse the problem, because you need larger water containers. But no matter what tank you have, the amount of stuff you accumulate over time is ridiculous. And I can promise you, you'll need some of it at one point, so you can't chuck it away. Number nine is that this hobby is pretty bad for coral reefs. Now more and more fish are being captive bred and fragging corals has been growing for a while, but there are still hundreds of thousands of fish and corals pulled out of the ocean each year just so we can have something pretty in our living rooms. There's currently what amounts to a ban in Indonesia on exporting corals and while it makes me sad that a great source of livestock isn't currently open to me, I can't honestly say it's a bad thing. Now there are arguments against this point, it provides a livelihood for locals in poor countries and when done sustainably it won't harm the reefs. But whatever way you cut it, we're not doing fish a favour by pulling them out of the ocean and putting them in our living rooms. Next up is algae. The conditions we keep corals in also happen to suit certain types of undesirable algae rather well. And while you'll often struggle to keep corals growing, that is never the case with algae, whether you like it or not. And fixing the problem is rarely easy. You can have high nitrates and phosphates with no algae, or low nitrates and phosphates with lots of algae. Go figure. And while you try out every method you can find on Google, the algae will be engulfing your rock work and suffocating your corals. Algae is just one of the many infuriating parts of this hobby that can very easily ruin your enjoyment. Number seven on my list is maintenance. Constant bloody maintenance. You can spend hours each week testing parameters, cleaning your equipment, mixing salt, doing water changes, cleaning algae off the glass, the list goes on and on. As with everything in life, in reefing, you get out what you put in. So if you neglect maintenance, your tank will suffer. Corals will fade and die, algae will take hold, and your tank will start to look generally quite sad, which will inevitably cause you to lose interest. While there are some methods that reduce maintenance, make no mistake, this hobby is a time sponge. Fitting it around your life can be hard, and the less spare time you have, the more likely you are to let maintenance slip. Number six comes from the difficulty of moving a tank. This was my last tank after about two years. I'd gone through the first six months where sensitive corals died, I'd gone past the ugly algae stage, and I was just about getting to the point where I was down to fine tuning only. Then I decided to move house. And while it's possible to move a tank to a different location, doing so is extremely stressful and labor intensive and that's the last thing you need when you're moving home. So if your plans in life change for whatever reason, you stand to lose years of blood, sweat and tears. And depending on your resilience, that can be pretty hard to come back from. Number five is how much of a tie your tank will become. It will be absolutely fine without you for a long weekend, but going away for longer starts to become a bit of a risk. And that has put me off going on holiday for more than 10 days at a time in the past. The last time I went away for more than a week, one of my favourite fish died for no apparent reason. And that makes you wonder if things might have been different if you were there. Getting someone to look after your tank isn't that easy either. 
What if they put salt water in your freshwater reservoir? Or don't spot an impending catastrophe that could otherwise have been avoided? Now, I'm not saying your tank will fail if you leave it alone for more than a week. In fact, the chances are it'll be absolutely fine on its own, especially if you have an auto feeder and a large freshwater reservoir. It's just that thought that crops into your head when you're booking your holiday. What if? Number four is the steep learning curve. There are millions of things that can go wrong when you first start this hobby, and no matter how much research you do, you will drop the ball, and you'll do so regularly. It could be topping off evaporated water with salt water instead of fresh water, wondering what the F that hitchhiker is on your new coral, and if it's good or bad, finding out the hard way that some fish eat corals, not realising how much alkalinity stony corals consume, finding out that fish jump before you've bought a tank cover, and so on and so on. Be prepared to make mistakes all the time at first, and to feel pretty stupid that you didn't realise it would happen. Number three is spilling water. In a hobby that involves moving gallons and gallons of water around your house every week, you will inevitably end up with some kind of flood, probably more than once. I've lost count of the number of times I've left my RO filter on overnight, and mopping up 20 odd litres of water at five in the morning isn't exactly great fun. If you have wood floors, you're at risk of rotting them if you don't clean up spills quickly, and if you have carpets, you just need to accept that they will be wet 90% of the time. The runner up is that you will never be happy with your tank. Think this looks good? All I see is dead coral, maimed fish, corals I regret buying, fish I don't like but can't catch, and equipment I bought that I didn't think through properly. Prestige Reef did a very good video on this subject recently, and it really is an epidemic in the hobby. We start out because we think it'll be relaxing to watch our tanks, but you find yourself looking for flaws, problems, and areas you're not happy with instead. When you plan your tank, you have this picture in your head of what perfection looks like, but there is no such thing as a perfect tank. And no matter how good the tank, I guarantee the owner will play it down and focus only on what they're not happy with. You'll have no problem admiring other people's tanks, but appreciating what you've got yourself, no chance. And my number one reason not to buy a marine tank is of course the cost. You can easily drop two grand on equipment for a relatively small tank, and frankly, the sky is the limit when it comes to buying kit. Now you can do it cheaper, but you know you'll end up upgrading six months down the line, so what's the point? Then you'll need to buy fishing corals, and that's when you realize the equipment you bought was actually cheap. If the sky's the limit with kit, then Jupiter is the limit with livestock and not least because you'll need to buy dozens or maybe hundreds of corals to fill a reasonable sized tank. And no matter how much spare cash you have, there is no pain like the pain of losing a 400 pound frag two weeks after you bought it, or of finding one of your previously innocent fish has decided corals are on the menu. Then there's the running costs. Test kits, new equipment, electricity, dosing liquids, salt mix, food, replacement water filters, filter media. One way or the other, you will need to commit a large proportion of your salary to running a successful reef tank. And that expense will never end because of course, you will never be happy with your tank. So those are my top 11 reasons not to get a saltwater fish tank. Now there is a degree of hyperbole in this video, but I guess the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes you've got to be prepared to take the rough with the smooth. If you enjoyed the video then give me a thumbs up and subscribe for future content and until next time I've been the Reef Talk. Thank you, good night.